I just came back from a two to three day conference. And that was like a really big roller coaster for me as well. What was such a roller coaster about it? Well, well, well. So Frontier Summit happens in Vancouver. We have reps from Apple, Disney, HP, different VC funds that attended to this event. This was a really great opportunity for, for me to network with these people and establish that relationship. I saw this as a big opportunity for us to create content. Before going into the summit, I already strategized with Josh on like, hey, how are we going to be able to create content for this? How are we going to be able to have interviews with people? We're not going to pitch people. We're going to do it in a very smart way. Every day we're going to interview five guests and have multiple different conversations and whatnot. So trying my best to squeeze every single juice out of this entire event. I approached it completely in a different uh, in the wrong way because i was trying to be strategical and smart about this it kind of backfired on me i've been to so many different networking events and i have a way of meeting people and the number one rule that i always adhere by is every single conference i go to i just need to meet one person establish deep connection with that one person and that's all matters for me. And so if I go to like a three, four day conference, all I need to do is just meet four people and that's it. And every time I do that, I have the best result ever because it's authentic, it's real. I didn't end up having much deep relationships being built on the first day. And I came home and I felt completely defeated it was so far off from my expectation and I'm like man this sucks mm -hmm. yeah you came home really upset I think you you bought ice cream I did, I did. <laughs> you were like some girl broke up with me <laughs> and I just need to soak in ice cream <laughs> I did I did yeah I didn't want to go back at all the next day I felt like I didn't fit in yeah I didn't belong there you know I bet you a lot of people always go into these networking events with that fear. They should, because it they, is very They do, sucks. 100% <laughs> they do. Meaningful connections is really the key when it comes down to any networking event. So make sure that we keep note of that. And so I really just slept it off. The next day, I had to remind myself of this one thing that I'm trying to do. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Because of that mindset, it has completely changed the course of my entire next day. I was able to connect with people on a different level because my head was leveled. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not trying to get anything out of it. I'm just like, hey, you know, I just want to network. I just want to be able to provide value. I just want to see how to establish a relationship. And that is purely what it is. It also took away the expectation internally of how I should perform or act, and that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the end of the event, it was it was an amazing event. I, I hats off to Dan Berger who threw an incredible event, getting all these leaders in. There you go. Perspective. Uh, I like that. Yeah. So I think takeaway is establish that one relationship, a uh, deep relationship. Is, is really key. I wish for a princess and a unicorn. So you're away during that night and I was putting less than to sleep mm -hmm. at eight. Supposedly seven. Yeah, because he kept on playing with Jordy. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, put him in the bed. Five minutes later, I hear a screeching scream from Jordy. Ah, Weston's out of his crib. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my goodness, what are you talking about? And he went up and I realized that Weston has finally cracked the code. He figured out how to get out of his crib and that's a really big nightmare for us because he just goes nuts yeah he's not, he's not at an age where we can contain him
I'm glad you were there for that. Oh, I, kind of, I was happy that you <laughs> I, were suffering through it. I was suffering for me. a good two hours. I literally had to remove everything from his bed because I thought that, oh, maybe he's using the truck as like a stand to jump out of the crib. Oh, maybe he's using the unicorn as a landing pad. I took everything away and he was still able to come out. And I'm like, how the hell did he come out? It's crazy. And Jordan was like so tired that she just fell asleep and she's like, okay, you know what? Just forget about my crazy brother. <laughs> and um, and then I realized, huh, I can actually dissemble his bed, the bottom of the bed, and just let it sit on the floor. And then I looked at him and I'm like, good night, buddy. I got you. <laughs> so we have You're another trapped. half a year. Yeah, we have another half a year to go. 